below 3,300 students, you are going to be each getting a toolbox full of goodies for the electronics class this year. And everything in this kit is what you'll need for doing the hands-on labs. The kit has a lot of very expensive components in it, and it's your responsibility to take good care of these kits so that we can hopefully reuse as much as possible in the spring semester. Inside this kit, you'll have a kit contract that you're signing on Canvas, and everything in this kit and what needs to be in it so you can check off on that list. A couple of things that I want to point out that are really sensitive and things that you want to be really careful with. The DMM's pretty safe to use. It's not going to cause you too many problems. Generally, the only problems we have with the DMM's is blowing the fuse. You have an extra fuse in your kit in case that happens but you would have to be trying to do something wrong because all of the current that we're using in these lab kits should be well below what the fuse and the DMM can handle. So that shouldn't be a concern. The other item that is something we see every year that gets broken are the accelerometers. The accelerometers come in a static bag, so it's important when you're actually handling the static bag and the accelerometer that you wear a wrist strap. In the laboratory environment, that wrist strap will plug into a static mat that's on the table, or my table actually has ESD built in and has a plug to plug in. But for you, you will want to be using the ground that you put in your circuit. Typically, you connect that up to the black banana connector and then you can plug your wrist strap into your breadboard. The wrist strap looks like this. You put that wrist strap on your wrist and plug the banana connector into the breadboard and then the breadboard needs to be connected with your wires to whatever the ground is in your circuit. The other item that we see having a lot um, potential for damage are these brand new two-channel oscilloscopes. These two-channel oscilloscopes are little handheld devices. They have both input and output capability. One of the things I see students mess up a lot is the difference between inputs and outputs. Polarity can be one of the things that really gets you in trouble in circuits. In many cases, current can only flow in one direction or you break the circuit or break the hardware. So make sure you keep um, very careful use of your two-channel accelerometer and keep track of what channels are going to be inputs and what channel is an output because those cannot be switched or you will damage the little two-channel oscilloscope. So on this, mine has a little protective case. Yours will just have the actual scope itself because I didn't have enough cases available. You have two channels as input, channel A, channel B, and then one output that can generate output signals, sine waves, square waves, etc. So make sure you keep your inputs and outputs straight. Okay. The next thing that we see um, students damage frequently, and we want to really minimize and reduce that down to almost nothing, if possible, is on the Arduino Douay's. On the Douay, we'll be using the Douay also to act in a lot of different capabilities throughout the lab. We'll be able to use that Douay to measure signals, as well as to generate signals. Again, you have to keep track of what's an input and what's an output on your DUA. So when we get to these steps, make sure you're really careful with reading the lab descriptions and the lab documents and knowing what you're doing before you hook things up and turn things on. So I wanna point that out. We'll get more to these details as we get 
closer to the due and using the due but in that you want to really keep track of your different channels and knowing what your different channels are you have channels that are labeled analog in you have channels that are labeled um, for your different applications and the key one that we're going to use down at the bottom is DAC0 and DAC1. Those two channels are your output channels. So do not ever put voltage into DAC. DAC means digital to analog converter. And that means it's sending out a voltage. So each of these channels should never have voltage attached to them. They only have voltage coming out. Whereas the analog inputs, which are just above that, are the analog inputs. So that's where your input voltage needs to go. If you plug your input voltage in to the wrong pin down here on DAC 0 and 1, you're going to fry your DAC output. And that happens far too frequently. I'd like to really reduce that so that students aren't blowing up the DAC outputs. And then after that, the, that part of the DUA is no longer functional and you can't use it. You have to buy a new one. All right. Polarity, surprisingly, can be one of the things that really messes with you a lot in circuits, as I mentioned. So what are some components that you have in your kit that matter with polarity and what things don't? I already pointed out the oscilloscope and the DUA. But resistors and other components that you'll get in your kit may not care about polarity. So resistors, for example, current can flow in either direction. So it doesn't matter which direction you hook up your resistor, it's gonna work either way. Many of the capacitors that you get, the little small capacitors like you see here that are in your kit, these ceramic capacitors do not have a polarity and they are marked accordingly on the schematic. There is a different symbol for a capacitor that is polarized versus a capacitor that is not polarized. Luckily for you, most of the capacitors we're going to use in the beginning are the non-polarized type, but we do have some for the power lab that are polarized. So it's going to be important that you hook those up in the proper direction. So what I want to show you today is what happens if you hook up a capacitor backwards and you flow current through it the wrong way. Some capacitors, like electrolytic capacitors, are polarized. So for example, this capacitor is marked, and they have different markings. This one that's most similar to what you'll get in your kit has this white bar, and this white bar is designating the negative. So that's designating the shorter lead, and that shorter lead is the negative, whereas the longer lead is the positive. In this capacitor, the standard is still the same, the longer lead is positive, and they mark that with a positive on the canister. So sometimes the marking on the canisters are different, but the lead length is a standard. So that should be positive. So we're gonna take this capacitor and we're going to hook this capacitor up backwards. So instead of connecting the red line, which is the positive coming out of my power supply, instead of connecting that to the long positive lead, I'm going to connect it to the short negative lead. Then on the other side, I'm going to connect the negative side or the return path of the current to the positive lead. Now for safety, safety glasses on for this, and I'm going to put this in my box. And then I'm going to take this and Turn on the power, starting at zero volts. Remember this capacitor is rated up to 20 volts. I'm gonna ramp this up. Okay. 
and show you what happens. We're up to 15 volts now. And that even made me jump. So that's what happens when you run current backwards through devices. We release the magic smoke. It smells terrible. Well, trust me on that one. And this is what the canister looks like. Now the canister has all of these fibers that come out of it and the capacitor is blown to pieces and is now broken and will no longer work as a capacitor in your circuit. So this is the reason why, for safety reasons, in circuits you really need to be careful about polarity. I cannot stress that enough. I hope this video helped um, stress to you the importance of polarity and help you stop and think about it a second before you hook things up to make sure that it's hooked up correctly in your kits. And good luck with the semester. I'm really excited about everyone getting a chance to do hands-on work even from home.